Hello, are you trying to achieve this effect for your game where you can see the path of the thing you're trying to shoot or blast from a certain place? Well, regardless of your answer, I'm Adam, I make games, and here's how to do that. For this tutorial, I'm using Unity 2019, but you can use almost any version of Unity that you prefer. None of these components are recently outdated, nor are they recently added. Our scene right now is just this wall of cubes, which are just boxes with box colliders and rigid body components attached to them. We're going to start by creating our Canon game object. So we'll start by creating an empty object and I'm gonna name it Canon. I'm immediately gonna drag this Canon into our prefabs folder to make it into a prefab. I prefer making my prefabs start with an empty game object and having all relevant components be a child game object but that's just a personal preference and you can do this any way you'd like to. Reset its position to 0, 0, 0. And then I already have a Canon model already ready to go, but you can use anything you'd like. Even a Unity default cylinder would work fine for this. Now I'm gonna take the head component and I'm actually gonna raise it up a little bit just so it's out of the ground, but this is still set to 0, 0, 0 as its relative position to the head prefab. Um, I'm also going to add what we're gonna call our shot points. We'll create a second empty game object and we'll call it shot point. First, we're going to override and we're going to apply all, and we're gonna do the rest inside the prefab editor. We're gonna double tap our Canon as a prefab, and now we're in the prefab editor. And now we can look here at our Canon and sort of manipulate it in this scene. We're gonna take our shot point component, and we're actually gonna use our little gizmo to look to the side, and then we're gonna click here to go into orthogonal mode. Then we're gonna take our shot point, and we're gonna put it up to where we want the Canon ball to come out of the Canon. I'll say roughly around here. Then we're going to rotate it. At this point, make sure you're set to local up here on the top left and not global, so you can still see the relative orientation of your child game object. For this one, we're going to rotate it a little bit so that it's about in line with the cannon. And when we click back to our position changer, we can see the green arrow is pointing out in front of the cannon. That's our up vector. And we're going to add a couple components to the parent game object of this prefab. The first one is going to be a line renderer of which you don't need to change a whole lot of components about it. Um, you can play with the colors here later if you'd like to, to make it not just a white line. But the main thing we need to change is make sure that this use world space is checked. And for us it is. And make sure that we set the line renderer to default line. We'll collapse this and we're going to add two scripts, which I've already pre-coded, but you can feel free to add two empty C-sharp scripts and then follow along as I walk through the code. First, we're going to add a Canon controller, which I've already added here. And then we're going to add a draw projection script. And you can see these already have components on them, but we're gonna walk through what they do. Before we walk through this code, we're gonna set up our Canon ball game object as well. So let's go out of the prefab editor. And here, we're gonna add a new 3D object, sphere. We're gonna reset its position to 0, 0, 0 and we're going to call this object Cannonball. We're going to add a rigid body component to it, and we're going to set its mass to around 10. Now, we're going to just kind of look at it relative to the cannon to get its size roughly correct. So we'll put it around here. It's probably a good size, but I'm going to up it up to 1.5 to reset its position, and we're going to drag the Cannonball into our prefab folder to make it a prefab. Then we will actually delete the Cannonball instance from our scene. Now let's take a look back at our Canon prefab in the prefab editor, and let's walk through the code. First, we have our Canon controller. First, we set up a public float called rotation speed, and this is gonna be the speed by which we can turn the Canon left and right or up and down. Then we're gonna add a public float called blast power, and this will be the speed at which the Cannonball blasts out of the Canon. Feel free to change this to whatever you'd like to, but I chose five. Then we're gonna declare a public game object called Cannonball, which will be our prefab later, and then we'll add a public transform called shot point, which we've already made earlier and we're gonna have to drag into this slot. I've commented it out, but we also have a public game object explosion. And that's just for added effect later that I won't cover entirely in this tutorial. In our update loop, first thing we're going to do is declare a variable called horizontal rotation, which will come from input.getaxis horizontal, which will read inputs from the A and D keys or the left and right arrow keys. Then we're gonna declare a float called vertical rotation, which we'll get from input.getaxis vertical, which we'll read from the up and down arrow keys or the W and S letter keys. Then we're going to adjust the Canon's transform.rotation by setting it to quaternion.euler transform.rotation.euler angles, which is its current rotation. And we're going to add to that rotation a new vector three 
zero because we're not going to rotate it on its x-axis and then we're going to rotate it by horizontal rotation multiplied by rotation speed which will rotate it on its y-axis so left and right and then we're going to rotate it by vertical rotation times rotation speed which will turn it up and down on its z-axis lastly we're going to have a command so that you can actually shoot a cannonball and for this we're going to do if Input dot get down key key code dot space. We're going to instantiate a cannonball game object at cannonball at shot point dot position and with shot point dot rotation. And we're going to set this instantiated object to game object created cannonball. And then in the second line of code, created cannonball dot get component rigid body. And we're going to set its velocity to shot point dot transform dot up multiplied by blast power. As soon as the cannonball is created, it will set its velocity to a direction that is outwards from the cannon, away from the cannon. I'm not going to cover the commented out code in this tutorial, but these are just added effects to make the cannon work a little bit better. With just this script, this is the behavior you should see in the game. Now we can rotate our cannon left and right, or up and down. Now let's take a look at our draw projection script. The first thing we're going to do is get the instance of our cannon controller. And we're doing this because we're actually going to use the cannonball's initial velocity to determine how to draw the line out of the cannon. Then we're going to declare our line renderer and we're going to get that as part of the game object. Next we're going to declare two variables, a public int called numPoints and a public float called time between points. The number of points will be the number of points on your line and the time between points is really just the distance between those points. So a high number of points but a low time between points will be a short line that's really smooth and a low num points and a high time between points will be a longer but jaggedy line. So you're going to want to sort of tweak these for your liking. Then we're going to declare a public layer mask called collidable layers. We're going to use this later so that when the line collides with a surface that it shouldn't really be going through, the line will stop drawing itself at that point. In our start function, we're going to set cannon controller to get component cannon controller, and we're going to set our line renderer to get component line renderer. In our update loop, we're first going to set our line renderer dot position count to num points to make sure the line renderer can take in as many points as we ask it to take in. Then we're going to declare an empty list of vector threes called points, and we're going to instantiate it as a new list vector three. Then we're going to get the cannonball's starting position, which will be our cannon controller dot shot point dot position because that's where the cannonball is coming out of the cannon. Then we're going to get its starting velocity by doing cannoncontroller.shotpoint.up multiplied by cannoncontroller.blastpower. This line of code might seem familiar to you, and that is because it's the same exact code that you'll see here. Shotpoint.transform.up multiplied by blastpower. Now that we have those two things, we're going to draw our line. So we're going to do for float t, and it doesn't have to be t, but t is used in the equation that we'll be using that I'll show in a moment. Float t equals zero. t is less than the number of points, and then t gets incremented by time between points. So t plus equals time between points. Now we're going to continually be creating new points and adding them to our list. So we'll do vector three new point equals starting position plus t multiplied by starting velocity. And that is because this will handle the X and Z components of our new point. Because in projectile motion, the horizontal velocity of an object is actually constant as it moves through the air. The only thing that changes is its Y velocity. And that is what we're going to handle here. In this line, we're going to pull from an equation that I found online. We're going to pull from this one right here. Y equals Y naught, which is the original position Y plus the original velocity in the y direction multiplied by t minus one half the force of gravity multiplied by t squared. And our new point y is going to equal our starting position y naught plus our starting velocity y multiplied by t plus the force of gravity multiplied by 1.5 or divided by 2 times t squared. Now that we have our point set up, we're going to add that point to the list. And then we're going to keep iterating through and adding new points to the list. To get the line to stop drawing itself once it hits a wall, we're going to do if physics.overlap sphere at the point we're looking at, 2 as a radius, but you can play with this value to get a different overlap sphere of different sizes. And we're going to pass in our collidable layers and see if the length of this resulting array is greater than 0. Now what does this do? Physics.overlap sphere 
draws a sphere at the point that you request at a certain radius and returns to you a list of all the objects with which that sphere collides. So what we're asking is to have it draw a sphere at the point we're looking at and if it's collided with more than zero things then we're going to stop drawing the line. So at that point we're going to have the line renderer change its position count to just the current amount of points that we've got and we're going to have it break from our for loop. Then at the very end of all of this, we're going to have line renderer dot set positions to our points to array because this takes in an array of points and not a list of points. Now when we jump back into Unity, you'll see there's a lot of things we need to set up. In our cannon controller, we have not set the cannonball. So we're going to go into our prefabs and we're going to drag the cannonball prefab here. We haven't told it its shot point, so we're going to drag the shot point from our prefab to this component and then here in the collidable layers we actually need to set everything except the cannonball to be a collidable layer how we're going to do that is we're going to go to layers and i've already set it up here but if you add a layer you can add a new layer called cannonball which i've already done so i will not add it here and then you'll want to go to your cannonball and change its layer to cannonball then when we go back to our cannon we're going to have the collidable layers be everything except the cannonball and now it says mixed but if we look here everything is checked except the cannonball layer now if we hit play you'll see our drawing does work but this isn't exactly as exciting as we wanted it to be we can go back into our cannon and we can change our blast power to say let's change it to 30. and now we can really blast our way through the wall as some added effects i'll change the color here to a sort of yellowy and then change the end to sort of more of an orange and I'll uncomment out some of the code. So we'll add a explosion game object and we'll have it instantiate and destroy that explosion object every time we press the space bar and we'll have it shake the screen. I've already made this explosion game object here which all it does is cause this little explosion. We won't be covering this today, but feel free to look up a Unity tutorial on making explosions. It's pretty simple. We're going to make sure to drag our explosion game object into the prefab. And that's everything. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I might make more videos in the future. Thank you very much and goodbye. If this tutorial was hard to follow, there is also a link in the description for a GitHub repo with this entire project on it.